Now, everybody wants to know, why do we have to have a one world government? Why is it that they won't let us have these things that we know will cure disease? Why are they so far from homeopathic medicine? Why this, why that, why this, why that? It's simple, folks. Once you really get into it, there is no doubt about it, there is a serious population problem. At the end of World War II, or actually during the war, they did a study to try to determine the effect of the returning soldiers from the war upon the economy. What these people who made the study projected was that there was going to be a whole bunch of babies born. They did a study again in 1957, which stated that the exponential increase of the population would ensure that the population would double between 1957 and 1990, and it did. They said that if something wasn't done, the increase in the use of insecticides, toxic chemical waste, effluent sewage, the pollution of the air, the use of fossil fuels, the use of timber, the increased need for raw materials was going to put us in a crisis because they said that if something wasn't done to stop the growth of the population, the population would double again 28 years from 1990. And it will. And then we will need twice as many trees, twice as many homes, twice as many cars, twice as much oil, twice as much food, twice as much everything. We will be putting twice as much sewage into the earth, twice as much pollution into the atmosphere, twice as much toxic waste material. And the study said if we don't stop this, if something isn't done, the human race will cause itself to become extinct shortly by or after the year 2000. secretly by Dr. Aurelio Pacecki in Rome, Italy. He got together a group of elite men and scientists, and they did another study and came up with exactly the same answers. They then commissioned a group of people in the United States at MIT. They put together a team to establish a computer model to determine what can be done to stop this. What can be done to ensure that it doesn't happen again? What can be done to ensure that the human race survives? And the answer is some of the things that I'm going to show you. All of this is in my book. It's thoroughly documented. It's going to really upset some of you, but it's true. The first indication publicly was this book written by Dr. Paul R. Ehrlich. Now, you all wonder why, why is Dr. Paul Ehrlich writing these books? It's because his wife, ladies and gentlemen, is a member of the Club of Rome. This was copyrighted first in 1968. It was the first indication of the results of the secret studies. This was published by Paul Irving. It says here, probably accurate to say that if all the food produced in the world today were in some sense equally distributed, that everyone would have an adequate diet. Does that mean that those who claim that there is no population problem, only a problem of distribution, are correct? Absolutely not. Population pressures are a product of animals as they exist, not as they might be. If lions ate grass instead of antelopes, the plains of Africa could support many more of them before the plains would be overpopulated. Similarly, the carrying capacity of Earth for saints is considerably higher than the carrying capacity for homo sapiens. In theory, the problem of human overpopulation could be solved by a reduction in population size or by a change towards more saintly behavior. 
The current situation of global overpopulation is so serious and the built-in potential for further population increase is so great that the only sensible strategy for humanity today is to end the population growth and start a population decline as rapidly as is humanely possible, simultaneously striving to achieve a more equitable distribution of the food and other goods of this planet, limiting births, and increasing social justice are not alternative strategies to preserving society, they are leading to the necessary complements. Next slide. Now, here is the key. In this book, Paul Ehrlich told us that they had already decided on the solution because they had tried zero population growth and we didn't buy it. We didn't buy it. It worked in some small areas, but it didn't work many, and it certainly didn't work worldwide. This paragraph tells you everything that you ever need to know about what is happening today and will answer a lot of your questions. Basically, then, there are only two kinds of solutions to the population problem. One is a birth rate solution, in which we find ways to lower the birth rate. Didn't work. Didn't work. The other is a death rate solution in which ways to raise the death rate, war, you ask me about the Middle East, you ask me about what happened to Iran, you ask me about El Salvador, you ask me about Nicaragua, you ask me what's going to happen in the future, this paragraph tells you what's going to happen. Famine, pestilence, find us. They have just shut off the water to all the farmers in the San Joaquin Valley. They produce 50% of all the vegetables that are consumed in this country. Do you believe that's an accident after reading this? Large corporations and banks have been forcing the small farmer out of existence and buying up land which sits follow. Do you think that's an accident? We have sold all of our grain to the Soviet Union. Do you think that's an accident? Now listen to this. The problem could have been avoided by population control in which mankind consciously adjusted the birth rate so that a death rate solution did not have to occur. He's telling us, ladies and gentlemen, that they have already decided upon it and that it is in effect. The next warning was the limits to growth. This was published by the Club of Rome. The conclusions are, and this is only what they revealed to the public, what they told to the power elite of the world is an entirely different story and is much more radical. If the present growth trends in world population, industrialization, pollution, food production, and resource depletion continue unchanged, the limits to growth on this planet will be reached sometime within the next 100 years. The most probable result will be a rather sudden and uncontrollable decline in both population and industrial capacity. And what they don't say here that they said in the, in the secret report is that the masses of people in the world will result to the overthrow of their government and anarchy over them as they try to feed themselves and their families and find jobs. It is possible to alter these growth trends and to establish a condition of ecological and economic stability that is sustainable far into the future. The state of global equilibrium could be designed so that the basic material needs of each person on Earth are satisfied and each person has an equal opportunity to realize his individual human potential. Who would suffer the most under such a plan? Not the rich, ladies and gentlemen. They are in control. It's going to be us, Americans, consume most of the raw materials in the world. 50% of the energy supply is consumed in this country. We pollute the earth more than any other nation. It is us who are going to have to go back and live like our ancestors did, and they're going to make us if we don't learn how to do it on our own. I'd rather be a volunteer than a slave. I don't know about you. If the world's people decide to strive for the second outcome rather than the first, the sooner they begin working to attain it, the greater will be their chances of success. And down in the last paragraph, something really important.
far-reaching and raised so many questions for further study that we are quite frankly overwhelmed by the enormity of the job that must be done. We hope that this book will serve to interest other people in many fields of study and in many countries of the world to raise the space and time horizons of their concerns to join us in an, out in an understanding and preparing for a period, listen to this because they're not kidding, it's coming very soon, for a period of great transition, the transition from global to global equilibrium. Henry Kissinger said when asked what he foresaw in the coming decade, he said everything will be different. There will be a new world of order. Many will suffer. For those who survive, the world will be better. And the last thing he said, we will have the world we have always wanted. Now if you know anything about Henry Kissinger, he never wastes words, and he knows what's going on.